You've got to plan to do what God says you can, and you've got to plan to have what God says you have. In this here, many of us, many people never learn the value of innocence and how to use and how God uses grace to move within it. Hear me. Many never learn the value of innocence and how God uses grace to move within it. The motion of grace celebrates that there is a purity that comes from creation or from your birth. And there is a purity that comes from us being recreated or born again. We need to look at both of them because this is two births. When we look at it, we are created in innocence. But as far as placement, we are born in sin and shapen in iniquity. That's what Psalm 51 and 5 teaches us. It may seem to be unfair. But just as sure as Jeremiah 1 and 5 teaches us as an example that while we were yet in our mother's belly, before we came forth of the womb that God had already knew us, he sanctified us and ordained us for our cause. And with all of this, he drops us off into a world with a nature within us that is capable of sin and a world around us that's conducive for exploring how to engage it. Now, here comes the problem here. Paul says this is why you can never think that you're past it. Because in Paul's writing to the church at Rome, in Rome 3 and 23, he says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But what we lose through con uh, the conditions of being underdeveloped and immature, God gives justification to regain by the wisdom that comes through our rebirth or being born again. So if you don't treat your new birth like it's a new life, you'll bring trash into your new birth from the old birth. This is what bothers us more than anything else is that we are very good at carrying past trash. And sometimes we got stuff we take from one relationship to another, one habitation to another, and it's not that somebody else needs to change while we keep getting the same result. Who really needs to change is me. Somebody talk to your neighbor and say, it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord that's standing in the need of prayer. In this picture, in this picture of things, it's time to drop the excuses of dropping our circumstances on others and begin to understand that all of this introduced to, to us by time, in the moment that we have purity of heart, gets switched on by our innocence. And God's grace introduces opportunity to us that was not previously available. These moments are so special to and for us because they are moments that are without assistance from the past or from the future. But God places in time where he injects heavenly events so that he can bless us when he knows we need a boost from our present situation. Somebody in here need a boost right now got some stuff that's been wearing you out and some things you don't understand why it can't change or why it has not happened. And more than anything else, what you need God to do is give you a boost above your situation. Somebody look at your neighbor and just tell them your boost is coming, your boost is coming. I used to preach about this and call it Kairos moments when God takes a moment out of eternity and he slaps time with it just that he might shift the future. He'll put somebody in your life for a circumstance, make it happen with your life so that at the end of it, you can see his handiwork and how he's starting to lead you to new paths that have been unknown to you. When we understand this, it's great to know a God that can do such a thing because God can just decide to bless us and just designate that the time is right now. <laughs> Somebody here, just look at your neighbor and say, your time is now, your time is now. 
I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want a God that could just decide to designate that from this time on, you are blessed? <laughs> Why don't you prophesy to somebody and just tell them from this time on, from this time on. You are blessed. Oh, they didn't act like they wanted to receive that from you, so just get it to somebody else who's a little hungry for what God's going to do in your life and hungry for what God is doing in life and tell them from this time on, you are blessed. You see, part of this is receiving the word of the Lord in your heart and in your spirit and accepting that what God says is yours is yours. Sometimes we get wrapped up in who's saying it to us. But you better get wrapped up in where it came from. Because when God's got something for you, he may send it from a donkey. He may send it from a child. He may send it from anybody. you got to prepare yourself to receive everything that God says is yours. Somebody ought to help yourself real quick and just tell your neighbor from this time on, I claim I'm blessed. My God, extraordinary blessings, ridiculous blessings, insurmountable blessings, in uncanny blessings, things I never expected, and I know that God's going to do. And if you keep using your moments right, time will not disrespect you, but give and make new room for you. This is what a position for us to be in, to be in a position with in situations because now when you get in this posture, you have some victories and if you get asked how you made it, all that you know to say is, I just held on. <laughs> I wish there was some folk in here that can holler. I don't know how I got there. I was just holding on. Some of y'all got some blessings right now, not because you did something that was so wonderful, but you just kept on holding on. You went for the ride wherever God was taking you. You held on through all kinds of obstacles, and you found yourself in a place where God blessed you. And anybody ask you how you got blessed like that, the only thing you can say is, I, I, somebody ought to just tell five people, I just held on. You know. I made it through it because I was holding on. I, I got through the time because I was holding on. I got through the pain because I was holding on. All I did was just. I feel Jesus in here. Somebody ought to help me just five, five people. Give them a high five and say, hold on, whatever you're going through. That's Hold on, don't let nobody take your dream away. Don't let nobody take your possibility away. Don't let nobody take what God has for you away. All you gotta do is just keep on holding on. Keep on holding on. Keep on holding on. It may not be popular, but hold on, hold on. Sit down, y'all. I got I gotta get a little more in this message. Sit down here. Yeah. In understanding this. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah. Just look at one neighbor and say, you don't know how I made it this far. Oh, but I was holding on. <laughs> Woo! At some point in life, your dreams are going to have to match your results. I hope y'all hear me. I ain't talking just to say something. At some point in life, your dreams are going to have to match your results. At some point in life, I need some spiritual folk in here. Your dreams are going to have to, if God be true to you, your dreams are going to have to match your re results. So I refuse to believe that there's no coming opportunity for me. That as long as I can dream it, as long as I can see it, as long as I got a promise, I'm going to hold on to God manifest. Somebody just give God some praise and say, I see my future coming. And I don't mind praising God over it. I see God blessing my life. I don't mind praising God over it. I see God turning things around for me. Woo! And I don't mind praising 
God for us.